The Lord decides sheep and I shall not want. He make an eye like dump on green pastures. He needed eye beside still water them. He restored eye soul. He needed eye in the part of I just as him name's sake. Yay! No I rasta. I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Me can't fear no bandulo. Me can't fear no Babylon. For thy rod and thy staff, them comforted I and I. Who will prepare the table before I in the presence of our enemy them? Who will anointed me head with no oil? Me cup run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Jah. Let the people of the Most High God say, Sila. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunimo, where we speak truth to power. And of course, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and every time it rests on the fire, we know there is something some shows cooking. Now, what is cooking today that is so delicious? I pray for the power of the Almighty Father, so we'll be able to cut and go through, like we do every day. Remember, we are in the service of God and country. We normally don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushudemo, and my name Black Rasta. Now, my brother, my sister, we start straight away with something that I've decided to title Right to Disinformation. Now, my brother, my sister, there is a difference between misinformation and disinformation. They might be brothers or twins, but they are not Siamese twins. My brother, my sister, now when we talk about misinformation we're talking about falsity spreading false information either to mislead or whatever but what is most important is that there is some false information that is spread around now this information is when tactically we decide to hold back relevant information and send out false information so that we'll be able to mislead people concerning a country security or some other such thing that relates to the country. I want to believe that I've been able to define that in my layman's view. My brother, my sister, something important is happening, and this is truly, truly sad. How many of us remember Manasseh Azure? Manasseh is a journalist of serious credibility. And he's been doing this for some time now. Now he's a graduate of the Ghana Institute of Journalism. And since he came out of journalism school, he's achieved a lot. Yes, he's an investigative journalist. And he's been able to come up with a lot of rot. Some of them have landed people in jail. And others have also been investigated and have saved Ghana so much. My brother, my sister. Now Manasseh went to the Minerals Commission because he wanted information. We all remember the RTI, right? Right? The Right to Information Bill, where you have the right to ask any governmental institution for information. Now, we all know the Minerals Commission is headed right now by a man who is, uh, you know, a gentleman. By all standards, he's a gentleman. Yes. He's called Eugene A.C. The same. Now, Manasseh approached the institution and he wanted some information to be able to go on with his journalism. Hear me now. Now, by our laws, he is supposed to pay something small. 
one CD, 80 pesos, less than two Ghana CDs for the information. But when he went, the Minerals Commission refused to give him the information, but rather quoted that he needed to pay 1,000 American dollars. Did we hear that? The law say, pay one CD, 80 pesos. Minerals Commission says, no, we will only give you that information when you pay 1,000 American dollars. My brother, we are in Ghana, and we are crying that our economy is dwindling. The dollarization of the economy has broken our backs all this while. And when we check it out, every Ghanaian is now crying. Now, everything you want to buy, they quote the dollar. When the dollar sneezes, we all catch cold. Why is it that we cannot promote our own currency? On this show, time and again, we have talked about how important it is for us to deal with our own currency. Now, our currency is not being promoted. We don't even have the reserves to push our own currency. So every now and then, when the dollar makes a single move, the Ghana city dwindles to the lowest echelons. Manasseh held on to his uh, uh, edge to get the information, and then the matter went to court. When they arrived in court, now the court has decided that yes, hey, 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 that Manasseh must get the information and he must pay one CD 80 pesos. Watch it. Minerals Commission spends 27,000 Ghana cities to fight two Ghana CD RTI ruling. Now the RTI is simple. Yes, 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 yes. It's very simple. And the RTI said, give the information out for less than two Ghana cities. Mineral Commission said, two Ghana cities is too little. So they spent the taxpayers' money to the tune of 27,000 Ghana cities to fight a case of two Ghana cities, and they lost. Remember, it is the taxpayers' money. Remember, it is not Eugene AEC's money. Remember that this money is the taxpayers' money. Ghana is crying. Now, when Eugene AEC was asked, hey, now how come you want to spend 27,000 Ghana cities to fight a case of two Ghana cities? What would the information do to you? He said he did not want to set a bad precedent. He said information is vital and people must pay for information. My brother, my sister, if you believe that you are not doing business in the dark, if you believe that Everything you are doing is in the light and genuine. Why would you squeeze people's necks and ask for an arm and a leg for information that will help the development of this country? What at all is the RTI? Right to information. Why must it be difficult to get information? Why the RTI bill at all? If the RTI is supposed to make information gathering easy, do you think that the price on the RTI, which is $1,000, as requested and demanded by the Mirrors Commission, is enough to get that information? Oh, my brother, my sister, it's rather a slap in the face of the RTI. As it stands right now, the taxpayer has gone 27,000 Ghana cities poorer. The country is still struggling because of issues like this. We are ready to rob Peter to pay Paul. We are penny wise and pound foolish. Many people won't understand this, but in the interim, I want to say thank you so much to Manasseh Awini Azure. I want to say thank you for being persistent and thank you for standing for the rights of the Ghanaian people. Thank you so much for making sure that the right thing has to be done. As it stands right now, Eugene Kwesia, you see, you should be bowing down your head in shame. How did you feel when you had to announce to your staff that you spent 27,000 Ghana cities to fight a two Ghana city case? Is it not a joke? Will people not be running around the whole Ghana talking about this? But because Ghanaians most of the time sweep very important things under the carpet, we continue to have skeletons in our cardboards. Unfortunately, this is what is happening. I believe and I hope and pray that 
Other institutions will learn from this and make information gathering very, very easy. As this will glorify the RTI and also glorify the Ghanaian. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Now, I want to look at Kwesi Nyantechi. How many of you know Kwesi Nyantechi? Now, Kwesi Nyantechi at the time was the boss of Ghana football. In fact, wherever we went and it had to do with sports, it was Kwesi Nyantechi. He spoke in the media, very eloquent. Many people chastised him in the past. At times, he was also vilified, and sometimes he got the glory. My brother, my sister, to cut a very long story short, because we have visited this before, Kwesi Nyantechi became the face of Ghana football. He knew too much about Ghana football. But interestingly, Kwesi Nyantechi died. And the death of Nyantechi is not a physical death. It is a spiritual death. How did Kwesi Nyantechi die? Hear me now, brethren. It is a very interesting story. Now, Kwesi Nyantechi came to become the kingpin of Ghana football. The kingpin, yes. And then, Anas Armeyao Anas. How many of you know Anas Armeyao Anas? Investigative journalist who does dangerous investigations, recognized by Barack Obama when he came into this country, Anas Armiyao Anas has also been awarded nationwide and worldwide. Oh my God. Anas Armiyao Anas normally would not show his face in public. My brother, my sister. He did an investigative piece in Dubai where he caught Kwesi Nyantechi pants down, delving into a certain criminality. Kwesi Nyantechi wanted him. And then a Dubaian businessman to come together and control Ghana. According to him, he had the president in his pocket. He had the vice president too in his pocket. And there was a loudmouth guy called Kennedy Ajapo who was an MP who spoke too much in Ghana and needed to be silenced. And this was what he told the Dubaian businessman who was actually put there by the investigative journalist to test the criminality and the patriotism of Kwesi Nyantechi. Kwesi Nyantechi failed. Now the documentary came out and it was called Number 12 because they demanded 12 million American dollars from the Dubaian businessman, supposed Dubaian uh, businessman. And he was disgraced. Unfortunately, my brother, my sister, he was banned by FIFA for 15 solid years. He went to court. As to what has happened to his suit, only God knows. But he was disgraced. His wife even came out and said that when she watched the documentary, she was shocked that Kwesi Nyantechi was speaking like this. It was like some kind of evil spirit had gone inside him. Yes, she might have been right. It probably was the evil spirit of greed. But Anas Armiyao Anas at least had done his job. He had exposed a big fish as a criminal-minded person. My brother, my sister, the documentary also showed that Kwesi Nyantechi was involved in a certain kind of money laundering. And when it came out, Kwesi Nyantechi said, Anas Armiyao Anas had asked for a bribe so that that story could be frozen. Unfortunately, he couldn't pay that bribe. Hey, my brother, my sister, it was a shameful day for Ghana football. And Kwesi Nyantechi went away several months down the line. The first person to apologetically talk about uh, Nyantechi coming back was Paul Adum Autry. Paul Adum Autry is also a journalist, an apologist of the NPP, my brother, my sister. And he came out, and this was what he said. He said that, hey, we have killed Ghana football all because Kwesi Nyantechi was away, and we needed to apologize to Kwesi Nyantechi. Some other people came out and were for different opinion and said, no, this is not it. You got to shut up. Now look at this headline. Ghanaians must apologize to Kwesi Nyantechi. And this came from Paul Adum Autry and, of course, Captain Smart, who is also uh, an anti-corruption campaigner. And I was really shocked to hear that from Captain Smart. 
because Captain Smart is uh, supposed to be fighting corruption. And this was a man who was boasting about being corrupt and about being illegal. Are you condoning illegality or what? Or is it because it is Nyantechi? Should, should the law uh, whip some people and leave some others who do the same thing? My brother, my sister, at the end of the day, even Bag Bini, the Speaker of Parliament, also read his ugly head into this ugly issue. What did Bag Bini say? Watch it. When we brought down Nyantechi, we brought down Ghana football. Interesting. This is a man who is supposed to be sitting on top of the law. They are supposed to be making laws in parliament. And this is the speaker of parliament. How could you be talking about a man who was talking illegality? A man who was talking corruption? A man who was talking national security? A man who wanted to sell his own country to a foreigner for 12 million American dollars? Are you guys joking? But here in our brethren, it's an interesting thing. Nyahota Maklu, early this morning also, you know, got caught in the headline. Who is Nyahota Maklu? Watch it. Nyahota Maklu says, Kwesi Nyantechi's ordeal was planned by his distractors. So what? So what? A criminal would always be a criminal. It doesn't matter whether there's a plan or not. Now, my brother, my sister... Listen, if you are not criminal-minded and you are not a thief, it doesn't matter how many chests they open. It doesn't matter how many people leave their monies around. You will not let your long rubber hands get into those. True or false? Hey, if you claim you are a vegetarian and you don't eat meat, why would meat be found in your mouth? Now, if you claim that you are not a hawk, what are you swooping down on chickens for? It's a question. Is Nyantechi a certain God? I love him. Yes, he's my brother. We come from the same northern region of Ghana. I love him. I would have wished that he would be a FIFA president one day. But I love Ghana more. If Nyantechi was talking about selling the whole country to a Dubaian businessman, for 12 million American dollars, took part of the money, pocketed it, and never accounted for the money. That's a criminal. Criminal. What are you talking about? And people come out and they are saying, oh, and we brought him down, and blah, 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 and Ghana football, including Alban Bagbin. Are you serious, my brother? Are you serious? Paul Adumatri, an apologist of, uh, I don't know what it's a journalist of, I, I mean, it hurts me if I use words like this on fellow, I mean, journalists or broadcasters. It's quite sad. But my brother and my sister, we've talked about this already. Today, I just wanted to look at Nyahu Tamaklo's new epistles fired towards the great Nyantechi. My brother and my sister, the ghost of Nyantechi should not continue slittering. The man is gone. Let him take his punishment and go away. Do you know how many people are behind bars? All because they stole one plantain? Is it because they have nobody to speak for them? The Nyahota Maklos, the Paul Aduma trees, and the Captain Smarts? For that matter, they don't matter? Do you know how many people have been shot and killed and nothing has been done about that? Is it because nobody thinks about them or they have nobody to fight for them? Now, if Nyantechi is dead, let his ghost remain in the amolding grave. Where we are, but we didn't come with them. That's what the account people say, true? My brother, my sister, much as it was sad to have Nyantechi go that line, Nyantechi would never be the only one who raised Ghana football. If Nyantechi is gone, let him go and let other people of integrity and honor come in and let work begin. It doesn't matter how many times we start. And how many of you say the end justifies the means? Eh? Have you thought about it? End justifies the means. Have you thought about that? The end justifies the means. It means if at the end you are able to make it, it doesn't matter how you started. That is why you have elders in the church who are armed robbers. It doesn't matter how they got their money. What is most important is the money they have at the end. My brother, my sister. This is the Black Pot. My name, Black Rasta. 
And I have a quote, special one, for those who think that the end truly justifies the means. Hi, my name is Black Rasta, and this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunum, where we speak truth to power. Remember, this is not a political show. It's a show of patriotism. We not only don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. Now, the next thing I want to look at is entitled, Ghana is a mistake. Is Ghana a mistake? Why would Ghana be a mistake? Now, remember the Ukrainian-Russian war, and it's still lingering on. Right? People are being killed in Ukraine. Russia is dropping bombs. All because Ukraine wants to join NATO. The not American, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. My brother, my sister, hear me now. Now Ukraine feels that it has to join the NATO. Yes. And uh, when Ukraine joins NATO, Russia feels threatened. So because of that, Russia does not want Ukraine to be part of NATO because they are close uh, nations, right? Now hear me now, my brother. Hear me, hear me. The war is on. They are still fighting. It doesn't look like the war will end anytime soon. Even though we hear in the media skewed information left right and center our only prayer is that it will certainly come to an end but Ghanaians studying right there in ukraine came out crying that they needed to return home watch it and this is from the guardian it says international students trapped in ukraine appeal for urgent evacuation now when you read the story it tells you that Ghanaian students in ukraine Wanted to return home. Remember when our president, Anaku Fuadu, also said to the president of Russia, Putin, Putin, if anything happens to any of the citizens of Ghana, I'm going to hold you responsible. Remember when Putin also came out and said, I am going to open a special way for Ghanaians to return home. Well, some Ghanaians came home. Oh my God. They said about a thousand Ghanaians came home, right? And when they came home, now, what are Ghanaians from Ukraine in Ghana saying? Watch it. Everything is slow. It looks like coming to Ghana was a mistake. Evacuated students from Ukraine. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Did you hear that? Hey! Now, when you read this story, it says that the students are saying that they were promised that when they come home, they will be put in different institutions. And some other things will be put in place to cushion them. But they returned home, had a meeting with the president and his people, and right after that, nothing more. Watch it. It looks like returning to Ghana was a mistake. The students are still crying it. And it's all over in the media in Ghana. My brother, my sister, hear me now. Now the government in power has lost it. A government that is not sensitive. Remember, I did not say sensible. I said sensitive. Ghanaians are so good at skewing information. The next day, you see it in the headlines. Black Rasta says the president of Ghana is not sensible. The word I used, sensitive. Maybe the president is not sensible too. Because a sensible president is a sensitive president. If you are flying every now and then, and Ghanaians are crying, Mr. President, you are flying too much. Could you account for how much of our money you are using to fly around like that? 
and you arrogantly tell the people that it hinges on your security, so you won't mention how much money you are blowing away. That's arrogance. The president listens to nobody. But when he needs your votes, he comes to you for the votes. Yet when he's blowing your money, you have no right to know how much he's blowing. My brother, my sister, the country has become so polarized. Yes, the country has started dwindling so badly. Prices are increasing left, right, and center. And all our president told us was that it is a problem worldwide. Everywhere, prices are increasing. Yes, we know, but we are not everywhere. We are Ghana. Ghana is so blessed. Let us feel the blessing that the Almighty Father gave to us. What happened to our gold and diamonds? What happened to all the wonderful things that we have had? And we still have. What happened to our oil? What happened to our intellect? What happened to the human resources? So if other countries that are less blessed are crying, we should not be crying. Bad leadership. You told us before you became president that you were going to create employment, that we Ghanaians would all be employed, and that there would even be space for Japanese, for Afghans, and even Togolese to come here for employment. Today you are chasing Nigerians out of the country, that they are taking your employment, right? Today, Ghanaians are running out of the country looking for employment. They are being killed in South Africa night and day. Because South Africans are saying that we are also coming in to take their what? Jobs. Now to the students who return from Ukraine. You see how terrible the country is? If you still want to return to a war-torn country like Ukraine, as compared to a peaceful country like Ghana, then it means peace is not everything. That's why Peter Tosh told you, Everybody is crying out for peace. But none is crying for what? Equal rights and justice. My brother, my sister, peace is very important. But what is peace when the people are hungry? Peace is very, very important. But what is peace when people are starving? What is peace without employment? Can you have peace where there's hunger? Can you have peace where there's injustice? Can you have peace, my brother and my sister, where the people are crying every day? It's not possible. Now, my brother my sister, and all those who are coming all the way from Ukraine to Ghana, it behoves you, me, and many others to come together and ensure that this country becomes a better country. This country is not for politicians alone. This country is for all of us the more we sit down and watch them destroy the country, the more we like to run to war-torn countries and stay there. Because even though we hear bombs blasting everywhere, we feel more secured in such places. I feel so, so sad as a Ghanaian and as an African to sit back and be reminded that fellow Ghanaians in Ukraine prefer returning to Ukraine where Ukrainians themselves are running away from, all because their country is worse than hell. Ukraine, as it stands right now, despite the bombs and missiles flying, is better than the peacefulness of Ghana. True or false? My brother, my sister, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. When I return, I have more to tell you.
walk out in glitz, glamour and style. She wants to turn heads wherever she goes. She wants to pamper people who matter with her beauty. She wants her beauty to open doors long before she even opens her mouth. Chic Luxury Beauty Home perfectly understands this and makes sure this is delivered 100%. At Chic Luxury Beauty Home, we make you glow brightest with splendid professional perm cuts, wigs, braids, lashes, twists and locks, waxing and more. There is a special pergola where you enjoy fresh air while we give you your sexy braids. We also give you a massage you will remember forever. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are professionally unique, so we have our own Chick Beauty products for your personal beauty care. We also offer international standard training in all our services and our training is designed to suit your busy schedules and convenience. Locate Chick Luxury Beauty Home at Asafwache, Akubwa Link, Adringana Road, in Accra. Call us now for business inquiries on 024-368-3070 or 055-9370-980. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we are sleek and chic. Blackboard. Coco Show. This is the Blackpot, a.k.a. Kuku Show no more. And of course, my name is Black Rasta. Remember, we are live on Pan-African TV, also live on Loud Silence TV, live also on Ghana Web TV. We are also live on our own TV, the Black Empire TV. We are also on YouTube, remember, and that is Black Empire Media, and our black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Remember to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the notification button. So that every day, Monday to Friday, at 4 p.m. on the dot, you'll be reminded to watch this show of patriotism. This is the Black Pod. Now, if you're a lady and you have an interview to attend, or there's a new guy in your area and you want to catch, you know how to do it. The place to go is Chick Luxury Beauty Home. Oh, my God. Now, Chick Luxury Beauty Home is here to stay. Hey, professionally trained people take care of you. Listen, globally recognized, what do you want? Is it natural twist and locks? Maybe you want some waxing, some lashes, or you want some um, personal care products from Chick. Mm -mm -mm. And Chick produces its own personal care products. Now, they also do perm cuts. They do wigs and braids. And they have a special pergola where you would sit and have some fresh air whilst you are giving your Goldilocks. When you step out of Chick Luxury Beauty Home, then you know that everybody will be turning hers to look at you left, right, and center. There's no interview you would attend and fail. Everybody is looking at you because you are Cinderella. You are the person who has come out and everything has to come to a standstill. Hey, now Chick Luxury Beauty Home is located right there inside Adjingadon at the Asafwache uh, Akubwa Loop. On the Ajingano Road. Make sure you go there. And then the numbers are also on your screen. All you need to do is to give them a call and find out. You want to make your nails, right? Beautiful nails, beautiful hands. Manicure, pedicure. You want to look good and splendid. And the good news is that they also train people who want to be part of this wonderful thing. Hey, you want a future in the beauty fashion world, right? Hey, this is your chance. Chic Luxury Beauty Home will train you in all these things that have been mentioned. A natural twist and locks, lashing, waxing, uh, perm cutting, wigs, braids. Oh my God. All these things you certainly will be trained how to do. Mm -mm -mm. And it depends on you. How much time do you have to learn? Are you busy? Do you want to study in the evenings? Or in the daytime, no problem. We will schedule it nicely for you. And another thing, men, it's time to take your women there at Chick Luxury Beauty Home. And whilst you're waiting for her to get the braids, you can get a massage that will make you feel like you are in heaven. Hallelujah. Hey, this massage is splendid. It's nice. Anybody who has had a, a massage at Chick Luxury Beauty Home, it's talking about how succulent, how heavenly, 
how paradisic this is. Mm, it's aphrodisic. You want to go feel it? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Chick Luxury Beauty Home is here to stay. Remember, we are also sponsored by the Can Courtesy of Tina Tet Natural Health Center, the House of Quality About Medicines. Now, every woman in Ghana and beyond knows about the Tina Tet Venice. Hey, my brother, my sister, women use it and it keeps them good and clean and nice and sexy. Hey! Now, what is it that you want to do with uh, tinnitus venica? It cures venereal diseases and so on and so forth. And you can just use it so you keep your own heavens beautiful and clean. Malaria, typhoid fever, and there is the tinnitus, uh, uh 230 capsules. Ah, you need just two capsules and 30 minutes later, gaga, ni gaga, osro, do do, kaji kaji, zoom. <laughs> Pick up the numbers uh, on the screen. And call Tina Ted or walk into any good Tina Ted shop and demand the Tina Ted product that is best tailored for you. Remember, this is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo. And this is where we speak truth to power. Now, the next thing I want to look at, I have decided to title it Hey, Lord God have mercy. Akufu Ado blows 30. 3 billion Ghana cities COVID cash. It's a question mark. We all know the former president of the Republic of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. He ruled this country for one term. In fact, he completed the term of Atta Mills, who died in the presidency. Mahama was a man many people saw to be corrupt. But after he left office, they realized there was a more corrupt government that inherited him, the government of Nana Akufuado. Now, people were so fed up with Mahama that people were talking all over the place. But he didn't care. He said he was a dead goat. No matter how much you would wave the knife, he didn't care. But now I think he cares. He wants to be president again. A lot of Ghanaians want him to be president. In fact, the EIU, which is a think tank, and they say the economists, whatever, whatever, in the UK, my brother, my sister, predicted that the NDC is coming back into power. So because of that, NPP is beginning to shiver. Pope Bilibili has caught them. Arrogant people in power. Throwing money all over the place. Illiterates all of a sudden. Have more money than professors. Not because they are hardworking, but because their government is in power. Nobody wants that. My brother, my sister. Mahama has said that Nana Akufu Ado it's a careless president. Look at it. Akufu, Ado government, blew 33 billion Ghana City COVID uh, windfall on election 2020 campaign. My brother, when election 2020 came, money was thrown all over the place. They wanted to be retained in power. So according to Mahama, the money that they got from COVID by force testing people, Money that they borrowed from the World Bank and also got from the World Bank in the name of COVID-19. They blew it and made it COVID-20. After it, the 2020 elections. What happened, my brother and my sister? Mahama argues that this money should have been used to cushion the economy. Alas, they rather blew it on the elections. Well, they won the elections and now chickens are coming home to roost. Watch what is happening in Ghana now. The price of bread has more than quadrupled. Hey, prostitutes have increased the price of their something. And when you walk outside, everybody is crying. These days, I've refused to answer calls. You know why? I feel sad that people will call me and I can't help them. So when I see a call, I shiver. Every call that comes in is a call that is asking you to send money. I'm sick. My leg is swollen. Hey, my eye is broken. Hey, my nose is bleeding. Hey, 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 hey. All over the place. Everybody is grumbling. My brother, my sister, and what has the president said? It is not only Ghana. Everywhere else is under pressure. Now, my brother, why did I decide to talk about this? We have seen these allegations over and over. 
Are we going to investigate this? Now, Nana Komiya is one man who speaks the truth that I like. Sometimes it's also offbeat. That's him. In fact, many people wanted him to be a minister of state, but they relegated him to the STC. He seems to be enjoying the place. Early this morning, this was what he said. Akufu Ado blows 33 million Ghana cities COVID fans. Stop disgracing Ghana. Nana Akomia blasts Mahama. When you read this story, it says the former president should come out with facts. He should be able to tell Ghanaians that these are my facts rather than just throwing around allegations. According to him, Mahama himself has agreed that there has not been an audit report on the COVID money. So how come Mahama is saying that the money has been blown away on the 2020 campaign? My brother, my sister, the enemy of a politician is a politician. The enemy of a broadcaster is a broadcaster. The enemy of a prostitute is a prostitute. Hey, they know each other. Bears of the same feathers flock together. Remember, Mahama was also accused of thievery. When he was president, Kennedy Japan said so many things. None of them was ever proven. Allegations all over the place. Are we a serious nation? Or we are a nation of idiots? Every day it is allegations. Hey, if this was the white man's country, they would call you to bring in information, hard facts. This is money that is meant for the country. If one pot bellied man, oversized suit wearing man, has decided to blow it away on an egotistical campaign to win him power, that is corruption. We all remember what happened in France. How some presidents had to seek some illegal funding in order to win elections. We saw what happened. Today, as we talk, Donald Trump is to face the American courts. And every day that he's been invited to the court and he refuses to go, he's going to pay about a thousand American dollars. If he absents himself from the court for 10 days, that's 10,000 American dollars. One year, you should be able to account for how many days you have run away from the courts. Can this happen in Africa? That a former president has been called in and the courts are standing firm and dealing with the laws. After all, the law is not supposed to be a respecter of persons. In our country, we throw allegations around to the point that we don't even take any of those allegations serious anymore. No investigations. All we do is to make noise. And when we start to investigate, they say, oh, it's all politics, you know. Why are we turning our country into a circus where clowns come to play night and day? How many of these allegations have you heard over and over? And for that matter, you don't even want to hear that anymore. Hey, in some serious countries, and I'm choosing my words carefully, in serious countries, my brother, when people hear such allegations on radio or TV, they don't ask another person whether it is true or false because people are responsible with information. In our country, it's misinformation, disinformation, refusal of information, and so on and so forth. Can we delve into this COVID money? Or oh, we are going to make it blow away. Arrogant people in power. Thieves in power. Why do we keep electing thieves into governance? Thieves who steal our money yet are never locked up. But the few hungry ones who go stealing plantains and bananas are those who are languishing in jail for the thieves to come and bail them. What is happening to our country? Can we be serious for once? If I was the president of this country, I would investigate every single allegation. My brother, my sister, what are the lawyers doing? What are the state prosecutors doing? This is very serious. 
A man can sit on Facebook and say he would start a coup d'etat. The next day, you track him down and arrest him and refuse him bail. Somebody's hiding in a small corner on Facebook, smoking ntampe, kai kai. You will find him and arrest him. Yet, 33 billion Ghana cities blown into a pot belly. You are not investigating it. Are you serious? Allegations of theft. Allegations of murder. And we all sit back and make it look like it's a Hollywood movie. Unbelievable. Are you serious? I'm just asking, are you serious, brethren? What does it take to investigate this? You brought a pretender who called himself special prosecutor. My brother, my sister. And he came here, let me see, Amidu. Came here and made noise all over the place. A letter writer from Ave Postmonu. What did that man do? At the end of the day, he also threw allegations all over. Allegations embedded in frustrations. The mother serpent of corruption. Hey, if your special prosecutor can label you the mother serpent of corruption, in some serious countries, this would not go unchecked. He has information that we don't know and we don't have. Prove it. Let us punish the mother serpents of corruption. But no, it's like a stealing spree. And we all agree that it's musical chairs of stealing. When it's my time to sit, I will sit. And when it's your turn, you pull the chair and also sit and steal. What are you teaching the youth coming? Sometimes I think about this and I shed tears, brethren. What kind of a country are you building? President is stealing. Messenger is, Kennedy Japan said, he pays his driver 7,200 Ghana cities a month. How much does the university professor receive? Your special prosecutor right now, he said when he was teaching in the university, he couldn't even buy a bicycle from his salary. Today, go and check his bank account. What information are you giving to the lecturers? What information? What message are you carrying to the teachers, the farmers, and all those things that feed all you idiots? If the professor's salary cannot buy him a bicycle, and he got so frustrated, he left the classroom, and he's now your special prosecutor, and his bank account is as fat as Nanaku Fado's belly, then my brother and my sister, we are in trouble. Why are you taking us for fool? Why are you treating us like this? Posterity is going to judge you guys so bad and terribly. I want all these allegations, in fact, to be verified, investigated. Kennedy Japan is a man who is full of allegations. I respect him because none of those allegations have actually been investigated. For us to say, oh, he's lying. He knows who killed Ahmed Swale. Yet we all say we don't know. One man says, I know. And IGP is quiet. I know who killed that MP. Nobody knows. Canada Japan says he knows. IGP is quiet. Police is quiet. Huh? What is this? And the police will come out and say, oh, uh, for a handsome reward, or we are giving 5,000 Ghana cities to anybody who can volunteer information uh, leading to the arrest of the murderers of Ahmed Swale. Ah, there's big information, Canada Japan says he has it. Why you don't want to give him the 5,000? Sometimes it's all a joke. Sometimes police will come out and they want to give 15 Ghana cities for information. What, what money is that? Eh? You are giving me 2,000 Ghana cities to risk my life to come and tell you that I know who killed Ahmed Swale. Are you serious? Are you serious? How much do they even feed the prisoner on a day? Do you know how much? Three Ghana cities. 
If you are in jail in Ghana, the government contributes three CDs to feed you. And that is not one meal. Breakfast, lunch, and supper, and dessert. Three CDs. In the morning, one CD. In the afternoon, one CD. In the evening, one CD. Your dessert is water. My brother, my sister, are we serious? So inhumane. We treat prisoners like animals. Yet, you know who should have been the prisoners? The deputies in government. They are those who should be there. Three cities. Spend that. When you return, you'll be wiser. To God be the glory. I leave this and I'm going to tackle the next thing. Now the last thing is a very sad story. And it happened in Nigeria. Two days ago, we all woke up to a very bizarre story. We all woke up to tears. Now in the Nigerian state of Imo, the Imo state of Nigeria, people are crying. And this is it. CNN says, huge blast at illegal oil refinery in Nigeria kills scores of people, including children. As it stands right now, over 130 people, men, women, and children, have been killed and burnt beyond recognition. What happened? Watch it. Blast at illegal Nigeria oil refinery claims more than 100 lives. Government says up to 150,000 barrels of oil stolen each day. And then President Buhari orders crackdown on illegal refineries. You see Africa? We wait for the West to happen. And then we all start crying wolf, 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 wolf. Hey, Ghana. We don't have an oil refinery. We don't refine our oil. When we try to do it at all, we failed. Hey, if Imo State, in the bush, people can refine oil, that Buhari will say that 150,000 gallons of oil stolen every day. Ay, 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 ay. Then the Nigerians are smart. Hey! The whole country, Ghana, doesn't even have one proper oil refinery. And thieves can hide in the bush and have a whole oil refinery. In Nigeria, Imo State, Una what? Una I don't open. Una I don't open. Ha! Hey! But my brother, my sister, did the government try to get all these people to open a certain school for them so that they can refine the oil in a more protected atmosphere instead of stealing the 150,000 barrels of oil? Oh, Buhari is thinking about catching them and cracking down on them like he brought about SARS shoot and kill them. That's all these African leaders know how to kill their own people. Elections come, they kill us, and that is not enough. After election, they still want to kill us. Ha! If your own citizens are showing this acumen that they can refine oil in the bush, and you are still waiting to go to America and get billions of American dollars on loan, to establish refineries, then you should be going to these thieves to learn how to refine oil in the bush. Does it make sense? Does it make sense, Virgin? Hey! Now, how many countries in Africa refine oil at all? Should we be going to Nigeria to pick up the so-called illegal oil refiners to come and teach us how to refine oil? On a more serious note, brethren, unemployment is the mother of all necessity. They say necessity is the mother of invention. And I am saying that unemployment is the mother of invention. If people are pressed to the wall, they will create. 
They either have to go through the wall or skip the wall. And Nigerians are doing that. My brother, my sister, to those who have lost their lives, we have seen documentaries of how illegal refinery is done in Nigeria. Are you not patriotic enough to be able to uphold your country and help your country develop rather than stealing from your country? I know that politicians make it very difficult for you to get employment. Could you have brought yourselves into an association like you did with your Okada? Okada People's Association. And you put pressure on the government of Nigeria, led by Charlie Boy. Right? Did I get his name right? The guy with so many piercings around him. Charlie Boy. And now Okada is legalized everywhere in Nigeria. Ping, ping, ping all over. It's Okada now. Couldn't you have brought illegal miners or bush miners association to the government to tell the government we know how to refine this thing? We want you to give us a concession so that we can pay tax and do this. Couldn't it have helped the country? My brother, my sister, as it stands right now, I cry for the people of Nigeria, Imo State, those who have lost their lives, especially the innocent children who will not grow to taste the vicissitudes of life. I cry for the wonderful families that have lost their family members. And I also cry for Africa as a whole. We are wasting our brains. Things that we are supposed to use are the same things that we refuse. People we are supposed to embrace are the same people we loathe. As it stands right now, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. This has been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, and my name Black Rasta. And remember, to do business with us, just check out our numbers scrolling on the screen. And then remember to also subscribe to our YouTube page. And it is Black Empire Media, B-L-A-K-K, -K, Black Empire Media. Click on the notification button so every day, Monday to Friday at 4 p.m., you would get to hear us. It is not a political show. It is a show of patriotism. On this note, boy, skip a job. <laughs>